In this part we want to have a look at an extension, which are multi-level partition trees. You already know from the range trees that we can augment our trees. So we don't want to just store a number at each internal node, which was the size or the number of points in it, but another data structure. And with that we can even process other types uh, of data. We don't only have to look at points, but we can have a look at larger things, like segments. So now my question is to you, can you design a fast data structure for line segments? So I just want to count all segments that are intersected by a query line. Of course you can also do all segments that are completely inside a half plane and so on, but for now I just want to do intersection. How would you do it? So we have our line L, and I give you one hint. These line segments, they consist of two points. So we have a left point and a right point. And the left point does not necessarily have to lie on this side, it could also lie on the other side, like here. So now to you, how would you solve this? We will use the following approach. We look at first only the right points. And now I take our line L and I do a half plane query on these blue points with a line L that goes upwards. And that gives me some segments. And we mark those points here. And now we look at the left points and we do another half plane query with the bottom half. So we find all those that have the point here. And then that gives me exactly three segments. So what can we do? We can do this whole thing on all the segments first and then on all of them again and then compare, but that takes a lot of time. So instead we want to have this second level data structure that when we are here and we already found out which of the segments have the right point on the correct side, then we get a second level data structure and we only have to look at these again in the next step. This is what the multi-level gives us. And this is more efficient than doing two checks because we can't find a lot and it doesn't really help us. And we have to look at all these segments again, although we already ruled out that they do not intersect the line L. There's one thing missing, of course, we didn't find this one here, because the right is on the bottom and the left on the top side. So we have to do the whole procedure twice, once with right at the top and once with right at the bottom. So our algorithm will look like this. This is basically exactly the same as we had for the select and half plane. There are only a few adjustments. So we have our line L instead of the half plane and we have a two level partition tree. And the first level tree has the right point and the second level has the subsets of the left points. So all of these nodes of the tree, they know which segments uh, do I contain. And then you have the second level tree that contains the left points. And now the only thing you have to do is if you get to a leaf, you check is it intersected by L, then you pick it. And otherwise, you look at all the children. And if the triangle that contains all the points lies on the correct side, then you just pick it and you do the select in half plane on the other side, for the points on the other side. So instead of just adding it to our set as we did before, we do another query in the second level tree. And if it's intersected, then we recursively call this function again on this. And what we get in the end is that the union of all these nodes that we have selected give us exactly those segments where the right point is above and the left point is below. And then we do the thing again by just flipping. We get those where the right is below, the left is above, and we're done. What about the running time here? We will not analyze it in detail, but we require order of n log n storage. Why is it n log n? We can argue exactly the same as with the range trees. If you look at a single node, in how many second level trees is it? 
it's in one for each of its nodes on the path to the root. And the height of this whole partition tree is log n, so it is an order of log n second level trees. So we have order of n log n storage. And for any epsilon greater zero, we now get a two level partition tree such that we can do our query in order of n to the 1 over 2 plus epsilon time because the algorithm works exactly the same as before. We have the same running time up to some constants. And now we select exactly as many nodes as before and we have exactly the same running time as before in the one-dimensional case up to some constants. Because as we saw it's basically the same algorithm. We don't do a lot more. We just sometimes go to the second level and that well, it can double things, but that's it. Who cares? But this about selection, we want to count. So for the counting, we get exactly the same query time as here. We saw earlier, it's the same algorithm. We just switch the sets for numbers. It's the same here. We have the same space. It's exactly the same data structure. And the preparation time for two levels it's still order of n to the 1 plus epsilon. This also does not change. And we can even generalize this to higher dimensions. So instead of segments, we can take delta level objects. And then we don't have a query line, but we have a delta level query. And now you can see I left some space here. Now things change a little bit. So now we get a multiplicative factor on this epsilon that depends on the delta, and here we have log to the delta minus 1n. So when we are in one dimension, this is just order of n, we have two level here, this is n log n, and if this gets higher, then we also have this delta here. For two, it doesn't matter that we have the two here, because we can just pick a smaller epsilon and we still get the same thing. But as soon as this is not a constant, we cannot do that anymore. We cannot pick a non-constant epsilon. So as long as our delta is a constant, we don't need it here. But if it's part of the input, then we have to add it. And that's it about uh, simplex range searching. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you for watching.